In my hands I'm holding a pair of World War II American made binoculars and today we're going to have a look at these binoculars and we're also going to have a look at the little case that they come in. Hi everyone welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to have a look at these nice American made World War II binoculars. We're going to go over the features of them and then have a bit of a discussion about who used them and the different markings on them. So let's start with the features. If you see here you've got a nice leather neck strap which I'm going to immediately unfold to get out of the way. Then you can see on the binoculars obviously you've got the two lens pieces they're both adjustable for focus so you'd take your glasses off if you're four-eyed like me because you can't use them and then you'd put them up and you use these to focus each eyeball individually depending on the distance of what you were looking at. You can also adjust the width of the binoculars so you see there just for pivot in the middle. There is a dial in the center so you can see where you're at. So these will go from anything from small toddler to Neanderthal on somewhere in between. So if I set mine perfect like that and now I can put my glasses back on so you don't have to look at my panda eyes anymore. If I give you a close-up of the markings you can see on the side here you'd see that's a M6 pair of binoculars my particular pair with a 6x30 rating so that means it's got a zoom range of six times magnification and a 30 millimeter lens inside it. Here you can see that my particular pair of binoculars are made by Universal Camera Corps in New York USA and dated 1942. There were various manufacturers they would have the date and the manufacturer of each pair put on the back of them. And just showing you the top of the binoculars, you can see that each of the lenses has its own marking, so you can see what you've set your focal point to. And in the middle here, you can see the marking, so you know where you set your adjustment for the width. So that's nice and simple. There's not a lot to these. You just got your focus here and your width there. And again here, you can see that there's a nice textured grip to the binoculars. So when you get out in the bad weather or in the muck, they aren't going to just get a bit of rubbish on them or get wet and just slip out of your hand. You've got a nice firm grip on these there. They're really well formed to the hand. Now when it comes to the markings on the binoculars, there are various designations for these and it depends on when they were made and who they were made for. So online I found one particular forum post from a guy who seemed pretty well informed. I'm going to put screenshots of that up at the end of the video just if you need information you can freeze that and screenshot it if you want to check your particular pair or to look at what you want to find. I can't guarantee it's 100% reliable but it does seem pretty good. But the gist of what I got online from various different posts was that if they were marked M3 then they should have been for the American forces to use. I've also seen uh, posts saying that American forces use ones marked as M6 like what mine are here. But other posts saying that ones marked M5 and M6 and ones with British nomenclature markings like number two, mark four, whatever it may be, were only used by the Commonwealth forces. I can't verify that, obviously. So you, if you want to get really down on the little details, you might have to do a little bit of hunting. I spent a fair while looking through forums and I couldn't find a definite answer. But I'll definitely put uh, pictures of that forum post with all of the different nomenclatures at the end of the video for you to take a look at. Other differences on the markings is where it says M6 binoculars, you can see there, above that, just under my little finger there, sometimes you'll see the British mark and the arrow. Now that obviously means that them binoculars were used by British forces, so that's one way to know for sure if you've got something that wasn't for the Americans but was made for the British under contract. One other variation that can be found in these is that they should have a like range finding assist reticle in one of the lenses. The ones made for the British had a British range finder in them and the ones made for the Americans should have an American style range finder in them. Again I'll put pictures of them on the screen for you now but my pair of binoculars here for example has not got a range finder in either lens. Now that could mean multiple things. It could mean that maybe one of the lenses was changed out and replaced or repaired at some point. I've also seen posts that saying that if they've got no range finder in them then they could be pre-war civilian ones that were put into the army or post-war surplus which were put into the civilian market where they took the range finders out. Again I can't say that 100% for sure but seems fairly plausible to me. Now if you just want a pair of the binoculars to have in the pouch on a display in your tent in your jeep on a reenactment observation post whatever you happen to do and you aren't worried about the specifics of the markings then the actual pattern of binoculars themselves it doesn't matter if you get a British or Canadian contract pair or an American M3 contract pair it won't make any difference to how they physically look externally at least from what I can tell. Um, so the markings are a nice hunt for you to know exactly what you want to do but if you want to do a nice American impression but you can only get your hands on say a British pair of these still made by the Americans but just for British forces then don't worry about it apart from the markings on the back 
no one's going to know the difference. The only physical variance that I'm aware of is internal. So supposedly the different manufacturers didn't have 100% compliant parts. So say if you took my universal camera core binoculars here and pulled the lens out and you needed to replace one part and you got a part from another manufactured pair of binoculars, it might not necessarily fit. They had some internal differences, which is a bit odd, but there you go. Externally, it should be exactly the same. So let's move on to the case that comes with binoculars. Now, this is normally known as an M17 case, but again, on the forums, I found that there's various different uh, nomenclatures for them depending on when they were made and who made them and that will be included on that post that I'll put at the end of the video for you. It seems that most of the time though you should basically have on the top here it should be marked M17 case. Now obviously mine isn't. What mine has got if I bring the back up can you just see there if I get it in the light that's got that arrow symbol that the British used on their equipment so I can fairly safely say that my case was used by British or at least Commonwealth forces possibly which probably lends to the idea that marked M6 and with what I found on the forums these were probably in British service but again that doesn't really matter in terms of your display unless someone wants to read the numbers on the back and say that's not quite right which I've never had that happen to me at an event anyway. So the case is obviously nice leather you've got a quite substantially long shoulder strap which you can adjust to put around on the back you've got a huge belt loop so you can fit this to your pistol belt for your web gear i on a separate note i would not advise doing that with an original case these are like 80 years old at this point very old leather these are gonna be able to get damaged fairly easy this one's in pretty hard condition it's like fairly stiff and no damage but I wouldn't want to put that constant strain on it when you're moving around. If you want to have a set fit to your belt, then what I would recommend is you get a reproduction one of these cases. They're fairly easy to come by, not very cheap, but that would be better than destroying an original. Then on the top here, you've got a nice little carry handle that squashes down, held in by the two little leather tabs. And on the front, just one lifter dot and a fairly stiff opening up there. And inside, you can see you've got a nice like felt lined container now obviously using the case is pretty straightforward you lift the lifter dot up like this that is shaped so the binoculars will only go in one way round back in first just drop them in and you're all good to do shut that put your lifter dot in and you're good to go one more note on the case i have seen a lot of pictures of these where they've been like dyed green or painted green like an od from what i can tell you do not want an OD green one of these if you're doing a World War II impression. That seems to be a post-war thing. I've seen pictures from Vietnam, for example, where they have the same case, but it's been painted green or dyed green. So if obviously you want to do an impression from that era, go find yourself a green one. But if you want to do World War II, stick to a nice original brown leather one. So what sort of impression are these suitable for then? Well, really, if you're doing an officer impression, then it's entirely plausible that you're going to have a pair of binoculars if your artillery forward observer impression, something like that, again, entirely plausible to have a pair of binoculars. I personally wouldn't carry them around if I was just doing a generic rifleman impression. I'm sure there was plenty of examples of generic riflemen, just normal everyday soldiers being given a pair of these to do a specific task. So I'm not saying it didn't happen. I'm just saying as a standard bit of kit, wouldn't put it on a rifleman impression. If you're doing a display of say something like a checkpoint on a road or a machine gun that is meant to be overlooking a field, something like that, entirely plausible to have a set of binoculars sat in your little nest for use for spotting. I can't see there being a problem with that. So there's plenty of photos of these online. Go and take a look for original wartime photos and you'll see these being used in all sorts of places. Like I say, Ford Observers and Officers is definitely an easy go-to. And if you want to have them just laying around in your nest or in your vehicle, that's entirely plausible. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video, having a quick look at these American binoculars and their case. Hopefully you can get some use out of yours if you have a pair, and now you know what to look for if you're searching for a pair. Obviously, if you enjoyed the channel and my rambling on, please do give me a like and subscribe. Say anything that I might have missed about these or got wrong in the comments. That happens frequently. I need you to do that because I am far from a historian and need to be able to update my own knowledge so future videos are more accurate for you. So again, please do give me a like and subscribe. That helps me out greatly. I'll see you soon. At the end of the video here, I'm now just going to put a few seconds of each of the screenshots I took from that forum post. So if you're particularly interested in the little details of these, you can screenshot them and then put it on your computer so you can nerd out and find all the different information about your binoculars. So thanks for watching the video and I will see you soon through my uh, binoculars.